Welcome to Simply Science from Nature Education. I'm Adam Weiss and I'm here at the Department of Psychology at Harvard in the Moral Cognition Lab with Josh Green who looks at the science of morality and I guess you've done work into asking people how they would feel about pushing somebody off a bridge in front of a train, right? Right, so you're, you're referring to a famous uh, set of moral dilemmas known as the trolley problem, which I've kind of imported over from philosophy uh, in, in, into the science of, 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 of morality. Uh, and the first part of the trolley, trolley problem starts with what we call the switch dilemma, uh, where the, this trolley is headed towards five people, and you can save them by hitting a switch that will turn the trolley away from those five people and onto a sidetrack, but there's one person on the sidetrack, so that person will be killed. And the question is, is it okay to do that? And most people say that that's okay. Uh, you contrast that with a different case, which we call the footbridge case, where the trolley is headed towards the five people, and now you're on this footbridge in between the trolley and the five, and the only way to save the five people is to push this large guy who's standing next to you off of the bridge, he lands on the tracks, he'll get squashed by the train and he'll die, but the five people will live, and will stipulate that you can't jump yourself and that this will definitely work. In both cases, you can kill one person to save five people, um, but in the second case, most people say that's not okay. So the interesting question is, there are a bunch of interesting questions, but one of them is why? What's going on in our heads that makes us say it's okay to, to trade one life for five in the first case, but not in the second case? If I think about what goes on in my head there, right. the first case of pushing the button, I would feel like I was saving five people. Right. In the second case, I'd feel like I was killing one person. Right. But they're the same, ultimately. Right. So there are a few interesting things that you said there. One is the word feel, which is very important. And the other is this idea of what is your real intention? Are you intending to save five people? And then uh, are you killing the, f the one person, let's say, as collateral damage? In the first case, the switch case, it's a side effect. It's collateral damage. Whereas in the second case, the footbridge case, you're using that person as a trolley stopper. And what my research has shown uh, is that uh, when you combine that difference in intention, using somebody as a means versus harming someone as a side effect, and you combine that with what I call personal force, using your muscles to directly impact someone, you get a kind of stronger emotional response to that. It feels like violence, right? In fact, violence may be defined by that emotional r r r r response. Um, and we see this in the brain. We see uh, that when people respond to these cases that, are, that, are, that have this combination of, of, of features, th you see more activity in brain regions associated with emotion, uh, including a part of the brain called the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. And when this part of the brain is damaged, people have damage to this part of the brain, they're far more likely to say that it's okay to push the guy off the footbridge and to give answers like that. They, they don't have an emotional response that says, no, don't do that, but a different part of their brain that can do the calculation and say, hey, five lives versus one, that makes sense, that's still intact. And that response seems to depend on a part of the brain called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. So what's nice about these dilemmas is that they pull apart these competing neural systems, actually different parts of the brain pushing you in different directions, uh, one dominating in one case and the other dominating in the other case. Sounds a little bit like you would have the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other Except shoulder. Except that it's not clear which one's the angel and which one's the devil, right? The one on this shoulder can say, hey, we're saving more lives. We're the angels. And the other person can say, you're committing these horrible acts of violence. You're the devil, right? We're the angels. So it's not angel versus devil. It's two different ways of looking, look, look, looking at right and wrong. And it's not uh, clear that one of them is, 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 is the right way. So if you put somebody in an fMRI machine and you look at their brain and you study what happens when they make these kind of decisions. Right. Does the information you get from that inform us overall and how we should make some big decisions in the world or personally? Well, it doesn't give us easy answers, but, uh, but I, 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 I look at it this way. I think of our emotional responses as being kind of like the automatic settings on a camera. Uh, they, 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 where you can put it in portrait mode or landscape mode and it'll give you a quick fix that will get you what you want most of the time. Uh, I think our emotional responses are like that. They're sort of quick and dirty programs that give us the right answer most of the time for typical situations. Um, and whereas our, the, the, this other kind of thinking, this sort of more calculation kind of thinking, I think of that as more like having your camera in manual mode, where you can adjust all the things yourself depending on the situation. And I would say that in some situations, typical situations, like I'm angry at you, is it okay to kill you? No, right? Uh, and there, the, the emotions that make you say, stop, don't do that, they're doing the right thing. I think that there are other, other situations where doing something that feels horrible might actually be the right thing to do or a better thing to do. Uh, and there may be other situations where something could be, ter be terribly horrible, but we don't feel like it's horrible. And this could be real things like global warming. So, you know, 
uh, taking an unnecessary airplane trip or, 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 or not voting for a candidate with a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a better record on the environment doesn't feel like plunging a knife into somebody's chest. But the effects of us doing that could be absolutely catastrophic. So I think we need different types of uh, moral cognition for different types of situations. And the modern world presents us with lots of situations, I think, where our emotions are likely to go awry because they weren't tuned for the modern world. Well, it sounds like a good thing that people like you are looking into that then. And I want to thank you very I much for so. telling us about it. <laughs> Thanks very much.